fool around and don't pay attention when I'm sitting in this seat. I'm going to figure out a way to get your attention. pay attention because I don't miss meetings particularly when I'm in the building and so that was my motivation and I'm going to send a message I ain't through with it yet folk better listen I'm not going to be the stepchild on this council and I'm not going to put up with no mess my position is this I'm listening to Greeks Fields, Worthen, and Miss Galloway. When I appeal to the chair to get somebody from talking to me when I got the flow, I expect that to happen. For 20 years, I don't carry guns. I'm like Martin Luther King when it comes to starting a fight. But I'm going to exercise my First Amendment rights, freedom of speech. And when folks imply of things physical toward me, it's a problem. Cause you ain't stripping me out. Everybody but me. You ain't, I ain't trying to rule you, but these rules of order gonna rule you. Yeah, cool. These rules of order gonna rule you. Cause you don't, why? Cause you got a concealed weapon for me? What you getting at? I don't carry guns. What you getting at? This is a concealed weapon right there. Oh, yo, yo, this? So what I'm gonna do is file a complaint. I wanna make a referral to the Set police out. department on Mr. Davis for raising yeah, this and I'm threatening an elected official in the council yeah. meeting. You think everybody's scared I'm before? making a formal complaint, Mr. Raise Your Fish you and better. Gun Man. It's me. I expect the administration, police, and others to handle it. But I'm this type of guy. You can shoot me in the head. You can kill me. And I'm going to live one way or another based upon my religion and belief. That's how I roll. I don't have to be in a hostile work environment, folks putting their fists up at me. I don't play that. It used to be a clown on in living color called homie. Homie don't play that. So spread that word, and I spread it myself. When certain things happen politically in the arena I work in, I dealt with it with Juan Twez Davis. <coughs> now I'm dealing with it again. I don't play. I don't bag down and I don't play. But if I put my fists up and the fight jump off, I wouldn't care if I put them up at Miss Galloway, Mr. Griggs, or Miss Fields. It seemed to be headlines. I don't play. I don't threaten people physically, and I don't want it happening to me or nobody else. Fool around and don't pay attention when I'm sitting in this seat. I'm going to figure out a way to get your attention, because I'm not going to play ball. I don't have to support nobody but what my mind believe a hundred Mr. President. I ask to be excused, okay. and I hope this council is hearing what I'm saying, okay. because I'm dead serious about it. Thank you. Councilman Davis. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> well, I can see accusations flying, but I can handle it. I'm a grown big boy. One monkey don't stop no show. One thing about my Reese, and I don't put it on record of many days, I'm only good as my word. I gave a public apology. It take a real man to stand up when you no, you in a man's position, a grown folks position require a grown folks sitting in this chair. I'm not somebody's yes person. Right is right, wrong is wrong. But some people just hell bent on being wrong. I got a certain colleague that need to be put in his place and I'm a man. He tried to women, they can't do it. But I'm the one that sit here, I haven't threatened nobody, I'm not gonna threaten nobody. 
But the way he have carried on with Ms. Worthen, Ms. Griggs, Ms. Galloway, we may not never agree, y'all, but I got to respect y'all. You don't de earn respect, you demand it. Now, I demanded of Mr. Murphy, we had some run-ins. We corrected that. But I'm the type of person you don't slander, you don't play with, and you don't make your, no political threat on me because I'm not a politician. I'm not scared of nobody out there. I owe no man nothing but the love him. But one thing I do demand, and that's respect. This is going to be the last time I'm trying to put up with this accusations. I'm not y'all. But this need to cease now. And he keep going on talking about he's a elected official. I hate to tell Mr. Mays I am too. I'm not going to be nobody MF when you in my space violate my space. Act like a grown adult and he's still under my voice. I'm somebody you don't want to play with. Let that cease now. I made a vow and I made a public appeal of apology as a grown person. You need to do the same, Mr. Mays, and I am done. Councilwoman Winfrey Carter. It is extremely too cold in here. <laughs> now, I would like to make a referral to find out how we can get some heat going on in here. This, this is ridiculous. But I want to read something that I came across. It's um, titled Harassment and Intimidation by Government Officials, Another Visit to Maricopa County. And I just want to read the last two paragraphs of the article. It says, harassment is one of the worst forms of misuse of office. An official uses the power of his office not only to make life miserable for anyone who opposes him, but to intimidate the great majority of people into supporting him, or at least being afraid of speaking out in opposition. It not only uses public office to further the personal interests of the offending official, but it causes personal interests of other government officials, including the desire to preserve their reputation, to determine what they say and do. Unethical officials sometimes seek to destroy the reputation and careers of those who oppose them, usually in dishonest ways. This creates not only an unethical environment, but an environment of fear and mutual hatred which undermines the government in numerous ways. The most dangerous result is scaring honest citizens away from participation in government. Just like Councilman Mays is saying that he doesn't want to operate in a hostile environment, I don't want to operate in a hostile environment. I wasn't trying to disrespect him by not calling Mr. Um, Davis out of order, but I couldn't do it because I would have to call both of them. And once I try to do that, that always appears to be something else. I appreciate it that he attacked Mr. Davis because Mr. Davis generally supports him in every way that he can. And so I just want this, com this committee, this my body to know that I want to know what can be done. That behavior is not unusual. It is consistent. It has been consistent for five years. The attorney's office doesn't do anything. The administration can't do anything. This council can't do anything. The police officer is trying to do what he can to stay out. And all I'm saying is hostile environment is what I've lived in for five years. I'm not trying to bother Mr. Mays. And I am not going to allow myself to just be quiet hoping that he's going to change because he doesn't change. I purposely didn't come in here to the end. And so what I want to do, I don't want to leave it right there. I want us to bring in the tape. And we can do this in a governmental operations meeting. And I'm going to run it. And I'm going to show where this guy, if I'm not mistaken, told this young council that they could deliberate outside of a meeting and then the evidence on the tape will show Liddell Lewis, um, I don't know if it was Hurricane Rhoda or Worthing, and Quincy Murphy gathered. Then when they recessed after the meeting had been adjourned, they came walking in on a group of four or five with this guy. 
<laughs> he what? had told them they could deliberate and talk outside of a council meeting. Madam Chair. Right. Not only is that completely incorrect, it has nothing to do with this budget hearing. Oh, Can we please move on? Ma Madam Chair, if I Thank may. You. Thank you, Councilman. There was that, but you say this is an informal process. That's what you said. Now, when they talked about the operations, the NSO officers, different stuff, I want to make sure that I'm going to get with Ms. Winfrey Carter. You want to put it bring the video. You want it on the governmental operator because I'm yeah, going to shoot an and, email. Yeah, and so Ms. Herkenroder was a part of it. She was a ring leader, and I can assure okay, you. Okay, Okay, I'm well, a, I, I, Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm I, I, I did leave way. When you then, got a city yeah, attorney I, I, telling I folks they saying. can communicate and deliberate, but this is, you might not this want is, it on the record, but it's on the record well, it now. It is on the record now. She but can this laugh. Is a, you can play it down. No, I'm not it's playing. Untrue. I want to keep the. I ask moving. that the, the handbook from Dana Nessel be distributed to um, each council person through his department. Yeah, and and then I direct your um, attention to page yeah. seven specifically. Attorney now, what's Kim, wrong with that? Uh, now, let me, Attorney Kim, if you can make sure you can send that link, and I think it was he did give the MCL. If you can send the link to all of the council members, I would greatly appreciate it. And I want to direct to your their attention hearing. to page seven. Page and seven. we can leave it at that and discuss it later. Thank but you. I don't like Ms. Herkin wrote a blocking because she probably believed it. Oh, he said Council. we can deliberate. Okay. Liddell, oh, he said we Thank can you, deliberate. Attorney Kim. And they did. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, are we excused? Oh, you, you are excused. We have uh, one hour to finish up two other. Um, thank you. You dysfunctional, freaky family of mine, of this city, that we put you in there. You understand what I'm saying to you? Get real. It's time, man. I want to support each and every one of you while you are still in office because Flint has a lot of work that needs to be done. And you're not going to be able to get it done by yourself. So we must band together and see that Flint stops being an international joke. Uh, I've had family members call me from different parts of the world laughing <coughs> first but then stating how embarrassed they are that their hometown is a water cooler joke all over the world. I know what's going on here. Just a bunch of waste of time. Point of order, point of appeal, I appeal, I point of order, that we vote on the appeal, I, I don't think it's germane. I, I mean, just ridiculous. The same people over and over. Mr. Murphy, my, my point is, we is talking about a special order. He talked, Councilman Mays talked about us moving the business and getting the business done. Who I voted for has nothing to do with this special order right here. And he's not germane to the subject matter. And I wanted to um, put that on the record. He was not germane to this subject matter. And one thing for two and two things for certain, this one councilman um, person over here in the third war can handle my own and I ain't worried about what he think and how he wants to check me. That is not germane to the subject matter. And that's why I thank you, um, Councilman Ali, for um, um, appealing the um, chair's decision because we need to move this um, meeting forward and stay germane to the thing but he just feel um, obligated that he think he could just um, talk about who he go check like you check you ain't checking me point of information what's your point mr. Murphy do you feel checked he can dish it but he can't receive it and I'm done Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Is there anyone else wishing to speak on the first round? I'm appalled and take offense at the people like Ms. Worthy, Ms. Herkenroder, Mr. Murphy, and all these other people trying to shoot darts. Point, point of um, order. What's your point of order? Um, he is not germane to the subject matter, and uh, being appalled of um, our um, opinion or our vote don't have nothing to do with this um, subject matter. And we got four committees to um, deal with. We ain't even got to one resolution yet. And again. 
Mr. Mays, could you please stay on topic? Could you please rule whether or not I was on topic? That's, that's the point of order. You were on topic. I was on a topic. And so what he did with a point of order was just a waste of time. Anybody with common sense who watched this meeting know what I'm talking about when it comes to the memorandum and what the majority of this council voted wasn't relevant. And I'm getting tired of Mr. Murphy, Ms. Herkin Point of Rota. order. What is your point of order, Mr. Murphy? Him getting tired of me ain't got nothing to do with um, the subject matter. I don't care how tired he is of me. He need to stick to the subject. And y'all need to keep him in order. Mr. Mays, that was out of order. Ms. Ms. Um, Priestley, I disagree with you. And if I had to spend time appealing it, I would. Because I can say I'm tired of his interruptions. I can say I'm tired of these wrong Point votes. of order. Here we go. It's going to be a point of order when we break this quorum and leave y'all sitting here. What is uh, your you point can't of keep him in order. Be, what is your you point of order, You can't keep him in order because he keep on worried about how tired I'm making him and he making up me tired of him keep on putting my name in his mouth and he ain't germane to the subject and as a chairperson, keep him germane to the subject. About him. That was out of order, Mr. Mays. What was out of order? Saying I'm tired of his interruptions? Yes. Well, I say I respectfully disagree. I'm tired of him now. And when he got elected, I'm going to say his name, your name, and every other person's name. Ain't no way he can keep me from saying his name. I'm going to talk about his vote, your vote, and the rest of the votes. So y'all are rightly mistaken. If you think you're going to tell me and rule on his point of orders that we ought to order saying his name. Uh, Quincy Murphy, this. Quincy Murphy, that. That's what he's saying, talking in the third person, and we can't talk in the first person and say his name. You wrong. Hmm. If he's going to talk in the third person and say Quincy Murphy, uh, Mr. Edwards, I'm going to show say his name. Mr. Mays, can you still continue, please? I want to continue, but guess what? You got a point of order that you keep ruling with. You pacifying foolishness. Pacifying foolishness. Is it because the third ward set by the fourth ward? I can say Ms. Winfrey Carter's name. I can say my name, your name, and his name. You didn't heard him say his name more than any council person. When it comes to Quincy Murphy, he talks in the third person. I'm talking in the first person. I'm going to say his name, and you ruling this out of order to say I'm tired of him with them points of orders. I'm tired of him and Hurricane Rhoda. I'm going to make a point about it. And if you keep ruling wrong that we can't say their name, I can say their name. I can say Mr. Whittigan's name. I can try to say Brian's last name. Don't say Mr. Neely's. Who do he think he is? And you ruling with him? It's a distraction. I'm on a co-equal branch of government. We control the purse strings. We allocate money. We'll work with the administration. But I'm not running around like some of these council folks. And some of them running around, I've heard some of them say, not directly, my job is to make the mayor shine. That ain't my job. Um, point of, Here we go again. Point of information. What is your point of information, Mr. Just Murphy? for the record, um, that was me that said I was here to um, make the uh, mayor shine. And it was two council members in the uh, meeting when I did. Point of order. That. Is this a quick inquiry or a statement? Uh, it is a statement that point of order was out of, out of order. Mr. Murphy, you don't want people to say your name. When we said certain people wanted to make no. the mayor shine, you just interjected your name. That's why I say your name. Because if I don't say it, you're going to say it. My job is to make the people and hmm. the residents of the city of Flint shine from providing quality service and or a better quality of life. That's who I want to make shine. Mm. The city of Flint. You can be a appointee. Maybe Mr. Edwards and somebody else can get you down there as a appointee. But my job is a check and balance. So you want to volunteer your words? 
We appreciate it. Because after point a while. Of order. What is your point of order, Mr. You, you are, are allowing him to keep on rambling, and he is not germane to the subject matter. And here we is, still got four committee meetings to go through, and y'all letting him just sit up here and ramble and talk about nothing. And we sick of it. Can I continue? Yes. You can leave. If you say point of order. Yes. What is your point of order, Mr. Murphy? Him saying that I can leave ain't got nothing to do with me being elected to sit in this seat. Yeah, with some literature that was mailed out. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Illegally. Let's, let's, so you want to let's talk about some civility what, to can this. Can you warn him I, and then if he continues, remove him. Point of Mr. order. Mr. Metcalf still here. You. <laughs> really knew both out of order. Please continue with How I'm out of order. Why you want to rule me out of order and I got the flow? Because of the derogatory comments. Der so let's go ahead. I'm going to appeal let's your ruling, Ms. Uh, okay. Priestley. This is ridiculous. <clears throat> Madam Chair? Yes, ma'am. I second it. Okay. All right. My. <clears throat> We have a, a motion on the floor to appeal the ruling of the chair, which is that um, you're appealing the, my ruling towards you, Mr. Mays. Yeah, I wasn't okay. out of what I had to blow. That there is derogatory comments being made and lack of civility towards each other, and that was on both parts of, of our councilman, Mr. Murphy, and Mr. Mays. Um, councilman, may I speak? Yes, you may, Mr. Mays. Him talking about me. Um, having illegal literature is not a proven fact. And here he is talking about what he think happened because someone wanted to put some literature out in the community and you mad because I won and um, the person who you wanted to um, win in the third war didn't happen. So here you is, you mad because you know you can't control me. You can't talk to me no any kind of way. So here we is right now in a going back and forth and you deal with it while I'm here. Madam Chair. Mr. Mays. Let me say this to you as we might get ready to leave you sitting with him, you and him. Let me say this to you. Um, Mr. Murphy then interrupted all night from the beginning. Points of order, points of information. Now he say I'm mad because he won with illegal literature that was mailed out on his behalf. That's a fact. That's a fact. Point of order. What is your point of order, Mr. He's, he's making false allegations that he have no proven fact and nothing, no paperwork to prove what he's saying. Uh -huh. And here you is making, no, I'm, I have the floor. I said a point of order uh, on your statement that I had illegal um, literature. That's what you think. That's what you want to think. Uh, Miss Madam Chair, I'm going to bring literature that look like Allie Herkin wrote it with her picture. It looked like Quincy Murphy with his picture. I'm going to show all the people who benefited from illegal literature that they say they don't know where it came from. So I ain't studying what Mr. Murphy talking about. And I want our staff to know that all of this stuff can come to special affairs. And we will get the business of the city done. Mr. Murphy is talking ignorant all night. People been point checking and you've been agreeing with him. And the point of order is going to be that it's going to be a lack of a quorum. And he can sit here and play games and you can condone his nonsense. We have a point of order. Um, him talking about me ignorant is um, out of order. This is ridiculous. You got to oh, you done let this. And I'm here to tell y'all. Let's see if we can make Flint proud. Hey, one last thing. I ain't stopped the water crisis yet. For me, the water crisis is selling them lawsuits. People need to be made whole. They done paid for high water bills for water they couldn't drink. They've been emotionally stressed, embarrassed, and also their property values done lowered. Some of them done died. You can't compensate for death, and you can't compensate for medical injuries. I want to fight that fight with Mayor Weaver. We still might, but I'm going to fight it with Neely, y'all, and whoever. It's time to make people whole as we finish up the pipes. God bless the city of Flint. 
Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Vice President Mays. Um, I would like to say...